Welcome back everyone to another Fallout 76 build video. My name is Jug and this is going to be a big one. I've put together 30 building techniques that I frequently use while building in Fallout. Some of these can be pretty advanced, but I've also included a few tips and suggestions for any new players that come along. I'm going to go ahead and put time frames in the description so you can jump straight to what you're looking for. And I got a lot of stuff to cover, so let's get right to it. I introduce to you 30 building tips and tricks. I make these custom steps with roofs. And I just start with a foundation, snap that doorway to it, switch the doorway into a wall so I can place a small wall under it. Then I just put a roof attached to that small wall and then put another small wall on the other side. That'll let me clear out all of this. Well, okay, you gotta switch that to a door first. But then you can put the roof right back into place and it will stay there. Now if I wanna put another roof on top of that, all I have to do is just move a foundation that started all this over to the side, just lined up on that line, and then I just raise it up. See there? Just about the size of a floor panel. Then I'll do the same thing to this one. Place a doorway. Go ahead and get rid of that foundation. Switch this doorway into a wall. And then place a small wall underneath it. So if you try and place another roof on top of that roof, it's going to say it's floating. It's just too close to the roof. But the best tool for all floating objects is a campfire. And it works just as well on roofs as you can see here. So I have two steps here so far. I'll go ahead and clear all of this out, take a good look at it. Let's go ahead and jump ahead to a bunch more steps. This is what it would look like. It's a very easy way to make custom steps. You can make them as wide as you want. Probably the easiest way to run power through your house is just to run it through a doorway and then switch that doorway into a wall. If you take the power connector and put it on a mat, then move the mat a few times, you can now move the power line through everything. It will go through walls, it will go through static objects, it will go through the ground. This is a trick that comes to us from Monster Bird Nation, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Campfires are kind of magical. They'll trick a foundation into thinking that it's in solid ground, as long as it's touching somewhere near the top of the foundation. Not a lot of people know that the build height actually goes as far down below the camp node as it goes above it. So if you can climb up onto a tree, drop your camp up there, then you can come back down and build twice as tall. This building here is nine stories, and I think that's about as big as you can get. If you're ever just wanting some kind of floating platform that you can stick your turrets up on top of, keep them away from any ground forces. All you got to do is just stick a roof, stick a wall to that roof, then go back, get rid of the roof, and then you can get rid of the rest of this. Now, if you get rid of this foundation, you're not going to be able to place any more walls, but you can put another foundation down and then put your walls back if you wanted to. It doesn't matter where the foundation is, but that's not important right now. We just want to put some roofs up here. So if you just line this up with roofs, you could put turrets up on top, put whatever you want up there, keep them safe. If you'd like to add some curves to your walls, all you got to do is just stand in the center of a foundation with two foundations on either side of the curve 
and just drag these foundations out. You got to remember though that these walls have to be doorways or you won't be able to drag them out. Then I take the wall and push it forward. I don't move my feet. I stand still. That way I'm the center of the pivot for this entire arc. You can usually place these conduits straight through any kind of static object in the world. It really just depends on how thick the wall is between one side to the other. And usually, though, you can snap another piece to the other end of it and just pass it through walls. Now, what I do a lot is I'll stick it through the tops of these roofs. But then again, what doesn't go through? A lot of, a lot of stuff goes through roofs, so... I, that's really probably not even the conduits doing. This one's going to be geared a little bit more towards the newer player. If you're looking for plans, I'll tell you how I got mine. I just ran around to workshops for the first two or three weeks. I got so many plans. And, okay, so we didn't even have these vendors. I mean, okay, we had vendors, but they didn't have all of these plans they were very slim chance to have them now you can find them at just about every vendor very easy if it's not a quest item plan then you can pretty much find everything you need from the vendors and just farming up workshops this is a really simple one that produces kind of a cool effect you can just take any objects you want like these light boxes i've placed here you can take it anything really and just stick it right in the doorway uh, as long as it's just showing out on one side here you just place that right there it doesn't matter what you put in there but you can hide things in your walls i mean not necessarily hide it but you can place it in there and just kind of make it merge i probably should have put this before the curved walls because this is kind of like the first step in that process but hey, it is where it is. This doorway, all you got to do is just get rid of the foundations. Look at that. Put walls anywhere. As long as you've got some kind of furniture, any height, it doesn't matter. You can place a conduit on it and then place another conduit. I like to use these for railing. At Cobbleton Farm, you can find three very specific plants that are perfect for getting what I need. I'm not telling you that's the best plants. I'm telling you that this is what I suggest. This is what I use. I use corn, mutt fruit, and potatoes so I can make adhesive. And I think a lot of people do this, but just in case you're wanting my thoughts on what plants to grow, that's what I would grow. I want this small wall to be just a little bit taller than the foundation. I'm just measuring it. That way when I put a small wall up here, this building of course is connected to that foundation. Now when I put a full size wall, it's gonna go through the ground that same distance that I measured up against that foundation earlier. Now I can just go through here and build it up to the other side and fill in these sides with some corner, or not the corner pieces, but the angled walls here. These top arches. And then you can just, you could put walls here, but I'm just going to go ahead and put a garage. Then you get rid of all the rest of the stuff around it. And inside, you can use this now as a place to plant your crops, place to put water purifiers, all that good stuff. Now, I wasn't sure who started this. I found a video on YouTube. I did a search. I looked for the oldest one I could find. It looked like my usual me did this about three months ago. I'm going to put a link in the description below to that video. 
Now this one here I saw about a week ago on Final Renders page. And to be honest, I mean, he is incredible. I, I could watch him build for hours. Very entertaining fellow. I'm going to leave a link in the description for his channel as well. So have you ever had a foundation and you just couldn't put it low enough into the ground? I know most of you have already figured this out, but you know, there's a lot of new players that still don't realize that you can just take a foundation, snap this to the side there, get rid of the original foundation, and then lower this one because you, the ground's lower here. So then you can just take this, snap another foundation to it, in its original place and just line it up like that. Now sometimes the ground won't be low enough and you'll have to lead it all the way out this way to be able to find low enough ground. Now I cannot stress how important marsupial is. I'm trying to, but it is crucial for being able to jump up to s the second level or just any kind of wall that you want to get over. Really handy. Just go over to White Springs. I'm going into the service entrance, which you'll unlock once you get in there. But once you go through this science wing and go back to the terminal, you need to make sure that you don't confuse the recipes for the actual mutation itself. You don't need the recipes. That's if you're wanting to make them for multiple uses. Now, I couldn't find marsupial in the aid this time, but it does show up and you'll find it. So everybody at some point in time ends up getting pieces stuck on the field. You can't move them. What you got to do is get a foundation put back into place. Now it's not always as simple as this. Sometimes you might have to build a giant arc going out to some lone area that has a space big enough for your foundation and can connect with roofs or walls for that matter. But all I'm doing here, once I have that foundation, I can go through and take each one of these pieces one at a time back out. It really matters the order that you take them out. Now every piece can come out. You just have to make sure that it's stuck to a foundation. I don't get to use a lot of blueprints with my camps because I generally have a lot of floating parts going on. And if I try to place them back down, I just can't put them back down. Sometimes you can. Uh, here in just a second, I actually managed to find a spot where I can place it. The problem is, is once you do place it, it's going to be all jacked up anyways. It's not going to look right. The pieces aren't going to come down right. So what I suggest is blueprinting everything that is connected to a foundation and leaving out everything that's not. You can then place your blueprint back down. Of course, this is a very simple one, almost not worth blueprinting, but, and then you can put your walls back. This is another really simple one. If you ever wanting to flip walls and it's not working, well, the reason it's not working is because you don't have a foundation behind that wall. All you got to do is put a foundation down behind it, push it out, and it will flip around for you. Now, these walls are connected to the new foundation, but it's also connected to the old foundation, as you'll see when I get rid of this new one. A lot of questions came in about budget, why they had no room. I just want you to look at these lights. Each one of these is taking down about 1% of the budget each time I get rid of a light. That's, you got 20 lights in your place, that's 20% of your budget is gone. Lights are a lot. Get rid of lights, get rid of turrets, and you'll have plenty of budget. So I'm going to put all three of the basic building materials together for 22. I'm going to start with concrete and just go over here to the monorail elevator. And if you go all the way to the top, there 
is 10 bags of concrete up here. Just grab it all. And then there's another place I want you to check out. If you go over here to Kanawha County Cemetery, and then you just go through the cemetery into this back barn, and there is five more bags. There's even more south of this if you just keep on going, but really that's all I ever need for a day. This is where I like to go to get my steel. Over at Grafton Steel, you can get steel from all of these extractors. Well, there's two of them. But you can also kill all these super mutants and take all their guns and just look at all the steel you get. You know, you do this for about 20 minutes, maybe 30. You're going to come away with a couple hundred steel real quick. For wood, I just go over here to Sylvian Sons. Of course, you want to make sure you've got the woodchucker perk slotted and just load up on all this wood. You'll get, like, I don't know, 400 wood in just one go. A little more, probably. Now, this is another floor trick that works with the roofs. And it's really just a shortened version of the custom steps. All you got to do is just place a doorway, get rid of the foundation. I know I, I keep repeating this. Set it back to a wall. Put a small wall under it. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this again is because I'm, I'm doing something different with it this time. I'm not actually making a step. I'm making a floor. And there's different things you can do with these floors. You can load load them up with all kinds of traps you you could uh, put some radiation emitters underneath them what i want to show you here is some lights and i think that you'll agree that it looks pretty good there's actually no lights in this hallway all of the lights are actually underneath the floor Now expanding from that just a little bit, say we wanted to put a foundation underneath these roof floors. I'm just going to move this down. Uh, I guess it really just depends on what you wanted to put under here. I'm going to put a spike trap for this demonstration because I've already put a spike trap on here before and I know it works just fine. So if you just lower your floor you can take a mat, put a spike trap on that mat. Now these spike traps don't like to connect unless they are connected from the bottom just like that. And then you just move it a little bit so the line don't break and then you can drag it into position just like that. I'll go ahead and cover it up here. And let's get a demonstration. Let's pull this out just real quickly take a ride on it now scarecrows I like scarecrows better than turrets because it draws everything in towards them and if you got a bunch of rad rats or something attacking they'll all bunch up on it and you can just kill them all with one big pop We were all guilty of loading down with water purifiers at one point in time. But I'm going to show you a little test here. I, I run all of these for about 10 minutes. And then I check each one of them. You're going to find that they don't all get water. Basically, just one of these gets water every five minutes or so. So really, all you're doing with more water purifiers... You're just giving yourself more space to hold it so you can be away from your camp for longer. If you're going to be active and at your camp, one water purifier is going to give you just as much as four. You want to get a little extra protection out of your extractors, just put it inside your base. If you just line these 
foundations up around the outside, you'll only have one gap that you can't fill in. And you can just do that with floating a wall over top of it, putting a small wall down below that, and then filling up this entire area with roofs. Because roofs are magical. They just seem to go through everything. Now most of the stuff that I build, I can't put back down as a blueprint. It's just not mobile enough. It's too big, too wide. They're fun to build, but not so useful if you want to move a lot and you want to keep the same building. You might want to use something with just a single foundation and suspend everything in the air. Now I saw one of these not too long ago from Monkey Puzzle, and he had a really good one. You ever want to move something to the side just a half a block? Super simple. Just take a stairway up to a small wood floor, back down to a stairway, and just snap your foundation to it. Simple. One last thing I wanted to go over is perks. These are the ones that I use for building. I, I think that Happy Camper is great. I, I wouldn't be able to build without it because I'd run out of food all the time. Even water, I mean, it's really great. But Contractor is key. Without Contractor, I don't build. The, that's just bottom line. I think everybody knows that one. Now there's a few others that are gonna be useful. You're still going to need your home defense for when you're building turrets, but you can take that out once your defenses are done. There are some others, I don't know, like science. You could use just certain things require specific perks, but the only one that you truly need is contractor. That's the one that I wouldn't go without. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope at least one of these tricks was something new that you'd never seen before. And I'm going to see you next time. Hit that like button if it helped you out.